What's shaking bacon? Welcome to the bartender and the butcher. Today is all about butts. Boston butts. Boston booties, if you will. These go on sale often throughout the summer months, and since we're entering cookout season, it is the perfect time to stock up on pork for a great price. I'll be showing you a variety of ways you can break these bad boys down in the comfort of your own home. So let's get started. Boston butt is the world's most misleading name for a cut of meat. I cannot confirm if this butt is from Boston, nor is it even a butt cheek. It's actually the pig's upper shoulder, not to be confused with its lower shoulder, which is a pig neck. And if you're really looking for the butt end of the pig, you're going to want to go get yourself a ham. So Boston butt, pork shoulder, pork butt, blade roast, whatever you want to call it. And I'm curious, if you call it something different, let us know in the comments. Firstly, we're going to go over how to bone out a whole shoulder. Now, of course, you can leave it whole and cook it that way, but not all of us need to cook seven to nine pounds of pork all at once. And if that was the only advice I had for you, this video would be incredibly short. So I'm going to be showing you the way that I was taught by a man who's been cutting meat for about as long as I've been alive. If you have another way that works for you, that's cool. Keep doing it that way. Now, keep in mind, like with any skill, you're going to need to practice. The first time I did this, I think it took me about 30 minutes. I left a ton of meat on the bone and my subsequent boneless pork shoulder looked butchered, not in a good way. So if that happens to you your first couple times, don't worry about it. Keep the bone, use it for stock, and then just cut up your pork shoulder into pieces. Voila, nothing wasted. Now to pop this bad boy open. Before we start cutting, we need to get acquainted with our pork butt. Shoulder. I'm gonna call it a shoulder because I won't be able to take myself seriously if I have to continuously say my butt. Anyway, you'll see that it's almost square in shape. It's got pretty distinct sides, which is important to note because on one side, you'll find a bone that's long and skinny. And then on the other side, you'll find a bone that is more rounded. Just two sides of the singular bone running through the piece. Now, if you wanted, we could make a cut directly behind the rounded bone because everything past that is boneless because that's where the bone stops. So if we were to do that, we would have a smaller bone in roast and then a boneless piece that we could do whatever we wanted with. Cut it up into smaller pieces, leave it as a boneless roast, the world is your oyster. I consider the fat cap the top. To start the boning process, we actually need to flip to the side with the longer skinny bone. And sometimes you'll be able to tell, sometimes you won't. The bone kind of curves up into a point towards the middle. And then the bottom is actually just completely flat. These are good things to kind of keep in mind as we're making our way through. I'm going to be using my boning knife for this. We're going to turn it so that the fat cap is away from me and the round bone as well as the flat edge facing me. To start, I'm going to hold my knife like this with the blade facing downwards. We're just going to do shallow, short cuts because you're not only using your knife to cut things apart, you're using it to feel the curves in the bone. So our first cut is going to be directly next to the flat side of the long bone. And we're actually going to keep going straight through the corner. We're gonna cut all the way down to the end of the round bone. So short and shallow. And also with keeping your cut short and shallow, you can redirect your knife closer to the bone if you have to. If you accidentally gouge a little extra meat, it's okay because you can correct it on your next cut. I'm only using the very tip of my knife. You can also take a second and feel where the bone is because the bone will actually curve. So I'm kind of feeling for that curve. I'm gonna keep cutting really close, change your grip, come down to the round bone, cutting beneath it and letting it free. And then where the round bone stops, that's where the bone is gonna start curving up towards the corner of the flat bone. Once we've cut down all the way to where the round bone is, I like to flip it around. And then this corner is all meat. The bone actually cuts across it like this. So we're going to cut the corner and start moving around the bone on the other side. So. as close to the bone as possible, pulling away, and then flip it around again so that where we just cut is facing up closest to us. The bone starts to scoop, so we gotta take that into account when we're maneuvering around it. Keep them nice and shallow, pulling the bone away, and then you're gonna feel the dip 
just go with the curve. You won't get all of the meat out of this on your first try, and that is completely fine. And this is pretty tricky. And actually the curve is right here, but then again, it dips down straight to this side. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to maneuver my knife up and around the point. And then if you can see, the bone is actually straight down like that. That's why it's kind of shaped like a pyramid. So once we get around the curve, we can change the way we hold our knife again and just follow that line of bone that we can now see. Around that tip of the curve. I take a lot of little breaks to kind of feel where the bone is because the bone is going to be a little bit different in any piece that you do. So taking a minute to kind of get your bearings again is never a bad idea. So I'm just going to come onto this side of the bone, curve around it, only using the tip of my knife still. And then coming around the other side Now we can kind of detach the back side a little bit. And then now we're just cutting until we can meet to where we finished our cut on the other side. So once we've gotten all of the meat cut away from each side, we can just follow the underside of the bone, pulling it away using gravity for the meat and the bone to pull away from each other, and then just kind of wiggle your knife across it and it'll just slide right off. Keeping awareness of what's on the other side. And there's your bone. So as you can see, it's almost shaped kind of like a pyramid, in my opinion, and how the bottom is totally flat and those curves. It's a little bit easier to kind of get a reference once you see it out of the piece. There's your bone. See, mine isn't perfect. I left some meat on there that could have been cut off, but that's okay. So we're going to put this aside. It'll go in its own baggie. I'll use it for stock. You can also throw it into like a pot of beans or a soup anything to add a little bit more flavor. And now we have our boneless pork shoulder. So from here, we've got a bunch of options. The first thing that we're going to do is tie this back up into a boneless roast. We'll get to the other options in just a bit. So we're gonna take some twine. There's a bunch of different ways to tie a roast. Try a few out, see which one you like the most and go with that one. I just tie this up in a super duper simple way. I like to roll it up on the side that the round bone was on. So the round bone was on this side while the long bone was on this side. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. I just like the way the cross section looks better if I roll it this way, but it truly does not matter. So we're going to take our twine, good bit of it. The open end closest to me, we're going to jimmy it under the side that we cut open because that's the only side that we need to tie. We don't need to tie the side that's past where the bone ends. Bring this towards me. Take my two fingers underneath, take the open end around my fingers, cross the strings and through the loop. And then you just pull it as tight as you can. Then while it's pulled tight, double knot it cut it with your knife or a pair of scissors and you're good. So I'm going to add one more tie about an inch over from that first one. It's really just insurance in case the first one breaks, keeping the roast nice and tight together. Now, because I don't want a roast this big, I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to cut directly past where our ties are. Be careful not to cut through them. I've done that before. Not the end of the world if you do. 
here we are. Kind of fix your ties, stay together. And there's your cross section, and now we've got two boneless shoulder roasts. You can obviously tie this one to be a little bit tighter together, but not super necessary, not unnecessary, just kind of whatever you would like to do. Into the fridge, these go until I am able to wrap them up, pack them up, and throw them in the freezer for when I am ready to cook them. So I'm gonna wash my hands and we're gonna move on to our second pork butt, pork shoulder. Drying off my pork shoulder and my workspace because a dry workspace is a safe workspace. Now that was the most difficult part of what we are going over today. Once you've got the boning out bit down, you can do anything. Now onto our second pork shoulder. We are also going to be boning this one out so we can cut some country style ribs and some steaks. We're going all boneless today because being at home, we do not have access to a bandsaw. On the off chance that you do have one just sitting around, there are bone in versions of all of the cuts that we are doing today. You would just take the side of the shoulder that has the long skinny bone and butt that up to the back part of the saw. And the side with the round bone would be towards the blades. You would pick your thickness, and cut some bone and steaks. But for us lowly folk, with our humble knives, we will be boning this out first. You could also cut your steaks before you bone it out and just cut it off the back end past the round bone, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm gonna to bone it out first. This one, the bone is a little bit skinnier, a little bit smaller. You can't see the point as prominently, but same techniques that we used before. The back cap away from us, flat side of the bone towards us, Staying as close to the bone as possible, cutting all the way through the corner, and then cutting all the way down to where the ground part ends. Feeling for the edge of the bone. Have we cut deep enough? We have. And then we'll flip it around, slicing across the corner, just the width of the bone. And then we'll turn and start cutting our way around the bone. Shallow cuts, pulling the meat away and repositioning our knife closer to the bone as we need. Sometimes you'll find that the top point is pretty prominent into the fat cap and Sometimes it feels like you'll cut all the way through the top of the fat cap when you're maneuvering around the tip. Just trust the process, keep going. But if you do end up having to cut this chunk of meat off, that is completely fine. Looks pretty good to me. And there we have our second boned out pork shoulder. To make this a little bit easier for me to manage, I'm actually going to cut it in two because the larger the piece, the more challenging it can be to get even slices. This is the side that had the round bone and I'm going to cut this directly where that opening ends. I'm going to put this to the side for now. That's the side that will become our steaks, but we are first going to cut some country style ribs. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. I think because of the state in which this is in, it's easiest to turn it on the flat side that we just cut. Find that opening of where we boned it out. Try to find the middle point as well as you can where each side is about equal thickness and keep this out of the way so you don't cut through that part and then have these little wiggly bits. Cut that in half through there. So country style ribs are not ribs at all. They are actually other parts of the pig that are cut into rib-like pieces. I don't make the rules. 
So you can cut them out of a variety of pieces. Obviously you can cut them out of the shoulder. I've also cut them out of boneless loins and sirloins before. It's easiest to put the flat side on the bottom. I then am just going to cut these into kind of rib-like strips. So I cut them usually about an inch to an inch and a half wide. And also take into account that they're pretty thick this way too. So I'm gonna pick my thickness. I'm gonna do about an inch for this. They're not all going to be perfectly uniform. So since these are shorter, I'm actually going to cut this top part in half. One, to make it easier to cut, and two, to make them a little bit more even in size. And now we have our boneless country style ribs. Now from here, it's also a good place to cut these into chunks if you would like to do that, which I am going to do with a few of them. You can also always cut off any little bits of extra fat that you would like to. I like to keep the fat on, gives me more options later. Then from here, I'm just going to cut them into about two inch chunks. I like to cut them into chunks, usually when I'm putting them in the slow cooker and cooking them that way. They cook a little faster, a little bit more evenly in my opinion. Now we're going to move on to our last piece of our pork shoulder to cut some steaks. So like I said earlier, the bigger the piece, a little bit more challenging it is to cut even pieces. You could cut this in half and do smaller steaks if you would like to make it a little bit easier on yourself. I usually cut my steaks similar to the country style ribs about an inch to an inch and a half in width. I'm gonna go closer to an inch if possible. I find it easiest to hold the side that I'm cutting off when I am slicing into larger pieces of meat. That was pretty good, not gonna, not gonna lie. Another one. You want to saw as little as possible so you can get the most even pieces. Those are two beautiful steaks. This one, not as cute. You could easily cut this down the middle and make another set of country style ribs. You can cut this piece into smaller chunks. I think because I'm indecisive, I'm just going to cut it in half this way. Have one of these be a country style rib and then cut the rest of it into chunks so that I don't have to make the decision of which to do. From two pork shoulders, we now have boneless steaks, country style ribs, some chunks, two boneless roasts. I would say that's a pretty successful day. Our next course of action is to vacuum seal each of these up, label and date them, and throw them in the freezer until I wanna cook them up. Low and slow is usually the rule of thumb when it comes to cooking a pork shoulder. So whether that's braising, stewing, smoking, oven roasting, all of those are great ways to cook any of the pieces that we cut today. I've also heard that these steaks go great on the grill, so that's a method that I'm definitely gonna have to try. And I've heard the country ribs are great on the grill too, it's just that you would have to have a little bit longer of a cooking time so that they come out tender. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you did, leave us a like, a comment, and subscribe for more bartending and butchery. And until next time. Hold on, I need a paper towel. Oh, right. Oh, right. Okay. So we are going to be born. So we are going to boil. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah.